Hey guys and welcome back to the Community Mod. In this series of videos, we do a social experiment where the community votes, I mod, and we see what we can come up with together. I know when the community works together, we can come up with something that is truly awesome. The best part is, when the mod is complete, I'll give away the controller to one lucky subscriber, so make sure you're subscribed. Finally, make sure that your voice is heard by voting in the comments section below, because each time you vote, that represents one opportunity to win. So in the first episode, we discussed the idea of upping our game by starting with a better base controller, and Emerald Blue just dominated by taking over 90% of the vote. In the second episode, we did some maintenance to the controller, prepared some mods, and talked about the idea of what color our plastic buttons are going to be. Speaking of plastics... Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness! So we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> On Wednesdays, we wear pink. And according to you guys, when you have an emerald blue shell, you wear pink buttons as well. Pink ended up running away with it, with about 35% of the vote. The next closest was orange, which took approximately 25% of the total vote. So before we start getting too deep into detail here on molding and casting these buttons, I'd just like to say that I've done a full video that gets really in depth on casting. Now what I plan to do here is show some different ways to do different parts of that, as well as some kind of call it process improvements along the way. I'll point them out as I go, but if you're interested in an in-depth, deep dive into casting, make sure you check out the card in the upper right hand corner. So the first thing to kind of point out here is you're going to notice I've packed the bottom of the buttons with some plastilina clay to make the process a little bit easier and use a little less silicone a little bit later on. Also you're going to notice that I polished the top of the buttons with some polishing compound and my Dremel. This is going to make the tops really glossy and reflective and those will be which is going to make those buttons really really smooth which we know we all want. So for now I'm going to use these clay tools to get the bottoms of these two part buttons adhered to the bottom of my mold and then I'm going to go ahead and use some hot glue to get the actual face buttons adhered to the board as well. Finally, you're going to see me glue down some acorn nuts. We'll be using these for registration, which is going to make my mold easier to line up on the back end. So for now, let's montage through this and get everything adhered. Okay, with the buttons all ready to go, I'm going to use these pieces of acrylic that I've got here, and I'm going to go ahead and make my mold box. So I'm going to use some hot glue to go ahead and make sure that my mold box doesn't move, and that I can pour my silicone without any problems. This is one of those instances where hot glue is extremely cheap, and silicone is very expensive. So you want to make sure that you got your mold box sealed up really, really well. With the mold box ready to go, it's time to get our silicone all prepped and ready. We're going to be using some Mold Star 15 Slow. It's a slow setting platinum silicone. This differs a little bit from what I've used in the other aforementioned video where I use the Umu 30. The basic difference between the two is the Umu 30 is a tin cure silicone and quite frankly I find it to be a little bit easier to work with. However, considering I have pretty significant experience with this at this point, as well as the proper tools, I'm going to use this platinum silicone. As I mentioned, definitely some of these proper tools. I've got the silicone in a vacuum chamber. And if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, I've got them all linked in the description below. So feel free to check them out there. But for now, let's go ahead and get that this mold poured. 
The trick is always to start in one corner and just let the silicone naturally work its way to the other. More fighters, more battles, more fun. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, only on Nintendo Switch. After about six hours, it's finally time to go ahead and demold this thing. So let's rip this bad boy open, get those buttons out, and start to prep for the second half of the mold by cleaning everything up and spraying some mold release. So what you're seeing me do here is use a syringe to kind of inject and put the silicone on some of the finer details. This is especially important on the D-pad and on the Z button because there's a lot of fine detail in there. So that's exactly what I'm doing here, just making sure I'm getting everything in the very fine detail there. So that way there's no air bubbles and the silicone actually reaches the surface of the button. Once you've given that in about a minute to make sure all the air bubbles come out, you just pour the second layer as you normally would. Same principles apply as last time, start in one corner and let the silicone even itself out. So I want to take a minute to just kind of point this out. What I'm doing here is creating sprues. In the previous video, you might have noted that I used some super glue and some toothpicks to go ahead and create sprues. Now I will say that method still works extremely well, but here I'm using a hollow needle to go ahead and poke through and create my sprues, and then I'm gonna follow that up with a drill bit. Now, either way works just fine. I just merely wanted to show a different way of doing it so that you guys could see that here. Okay, after all that work, we finally get to cast some buttons. So I'm gonna use some Smoothcast 325, which is an amber clear resin. It's a urethane based resin. And we're gonna go ahead and mix that up with some of our pink powder to go ahead and get us our nice pink buttons. The thing I really like about this particular resin is it does cure very, very quickly in about 20 minutes. And I will be using a pressure pot, so we should be getting some nice bubble free buttons. So I just want to pause for a second and say, this was not the intended result. But to quote my good friend Bob Ross, You know, over and over again I say, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. Happy accidents indeed. My goal was to make something that was a nice clear and pink mix, and as you guys are about to see, this is what we ended up with. 
I mean, these are pretty much perfectly straight pink buttons. Now, I will say it's pretty much exactly the picture I put up in the last video, so I kind of just said, meh, I think it's good to go. I actually really, really like them. While certainly not exactly what I intended, I think they look pretty good, and I think they're pretty close to what I put up in the picture in the last video. And there's one other added bonus as just a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with my black light, and you're going to notice something here pretty quickly. The buttons actually don't glow pink, they glow orange, which I think is kind of cool. And when you turn the lights off, they glow in the dark orange as well. Pretty cool. But now guys, I need your help. It's time to figure out what kind of paracord we're going to do. So the first option is neon pink and Carolina blue diamond. Next is neon pink with reflective tracers, pink sky camo, candy, cotton candy, and electric blue and neon pink stripes. So leave your vote in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and you missed any of the other ones, make sure you check out the next video over here. Otherwise, guys, I'll catch you for the next one here soon.